The most complex and expensive space observatory ever built has pushed engineers and technologies to their limits. The most powerful telescope ever built is ready to unlock the mysteries of the cosmos. The James Webb Space Telescope will not orbit the Earth itself, but rather in a point where the gravitational pulls of the Earth and the Sun equalize each other, called a Lagrange point. Specifically, the observatory will be stationed at the Earth-Sun L2, on the far side of the Earth from the Sun. After several launch delays, the Webb Space Telescope is currently scheduled to launch no earlier than 7.20 a.m. on Saturday, December 25th, from the Guiana Space Center in Kourou. What time does JWST launch? On Saturday, December 25th, between 7.20 a.m. and 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time Zone. A shiny new observatory called the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, is scheduled to ride a rocket launching from South America. How long will it take the JWST to get to the second Lagrange point? The James Webb Space Telescope will take 29 days to reach the second Lagrange point. After that, it will be in a stable orbit around the Sun alongside Earth. What will JWST look at first? Since the universe is thought to be roughly 13.8 billion years old, the galaxies that JWST will be observing likely formed just 100 to 250 million years. After the Big Bang, it will observe the births and deaths of stars. Why is JWST being positioned a million miles away where its servicing is impossible? Unlike the Hubble, 350 miles. L2 is ideal for astronomy because a spacecraft is close enough to readily communicate with Earth, can keep Sun, Earth and Moon behind the spacecraft, for solar power and, with appropriate shielding, provides a clear view of deep space for our telescopes. How can JWST receive sunlight, if an L2 point is permanently in the shadow, of Earth if Webb is orbiting the Sun further, out than Earth, shouldn't it take more than a year to orbit the Sun? Normally yes, but the balance of the combined gravitational pull, of the Sun and the Earth at the L2 point, means that Webb will keep up with the Earth as it goes around the Sun. The gravitational forces of the Sun and the Earth can nearly hold a spacecraft at this point, so that it takes relatively little rocket thrust to keep the spacecraft in orbit around L2, communicating with Webb. Webb's position out at L2 also makes it easy for us to talk to it. Since it will always be at the same location, relative to Earth in the midnight sky about 1.5 million kilometer away, we can have continuous communications with it. As the Earth rotates through the Deep Space Network DSN, using three large antennas, on the ground located in Australia, Spain, and California. During routine operations, Webb will uplink command sequences and downlink data up to twice per day, through the DSN. Why do we need JWST if we have Hubble and Spitzer? JWST has a larger mirror to see dimmer objects, and at a better resolution than the other infrared telescopes with smaller mirrors, Hubble and Spitzer won't be working forever. Spitzer was retired in 2020. Its cold mission had ended in 2009 after six years, after which it couldn't see the longer infrared. We're lucky in 2021 that Hubble is still working, but it can't see very far into the infrared. How does the JWST see back in time? The same way you look back, in time when you see the moon. Due to the finite speed of light, you see the moon as it was a bit more than a second ago. If you take an image from the sun, it shows the sun as it was eight minutes ago. The same is true for stars. The light from the nearest star is more than four years old. So when astronomers are observing objects on the sky, they actually see things which have happened years, centuries, millennials ago. Timeline of events after launch, in the first hour, the ride to space, solar array deployment, and free flight. The Ariane 5 launch vehicle will provide thrust, for roughly 26 minutes after a morning liftoff from French Guiana. In the first day, mid-course correction to L2. Ariane will have sent Webb on a direct route to L2, without first orbiting Earth. During the first day, the first and most important trajectory, correction maneuver, using small rocket engines aboard Webb itself. In the first week, sunshield deployment. Shortly after a second trajectory is executed, correction maneuver, it will start the sequence of major deployments, beginning with the fore and aft sunshield pallets. The next step is separation of the spacecraft bus and telescope by extending the telescoping tower between them. In the first month, telescope deployment, cool down, instrument turn on, and insertion, into orbit around L2. During the second week after launch, it will finish deploying the telescope structures, by unfolding and latching the secondary mirror, tripod and rotating and latching, the two primary mirror wings. In the second, third and fourth months, initial optics checkouts, and telescope alignment. Using the fine guidance sensor, they will point web at a single bright star, and demonstrate that the observatory, can acquire and lock onto targets, and will take data, 
mainly with near-infrared camera. But because the primary mirror segments have yet to be aligned to work as a single mirror, there will be up to 18 distorted images of the same single target star. After six months, science operations. Webb will begin its science mission and start to conduct routine science operations. We will get to see the first images from James Webb Space Telescope. Aren't you excited to see first images from James Webb Space Telescope? Please let us know in comments below. Thank you for watching.